Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you an interesting game played at the ongoing 2023 FIDE Grand Suisse. On the white side is Armenian chess grandmaster Samuel Tersakian and his opponent is Spanish chess grandmaster Alexei Shirov. This game is from round 7 and Tersakian kicked up with d4. Shirov's answer was d5, c4, c6. Slav defense is on the board and we have the so-called shallop defense. As you know, Slav defense is an opening requiring a huge theoretical knowledge and these are lines which even top grandmasters are choosing. These positions had been seen many times in games of Magnus Carlsen, Wesley Zo, MVL. Here White has two main options, Queen C2 or Queen B3. For example, in 2020, Carlsen chose Queen B3 move against MVL, but in this game we have Queen C2 continuation. Knight BD7, White Castle's Queen side. D takes c4, bishop takes c4, a6. Well, black could go for b5 straight away. For example, in 2020, in a game played between West Lizzo and MVL, MVL chose b5. In the game, we have a6, e4, and after b5, we have a staggering bishop takes e6 move by Ter Sahakian. Here we go guys, show must go on, after f takes e6 we have e5, definitely, definitely Shirov was very dissatisfied seeing this bishop e6 move and the consequences were definitely unpleasant for him, but what was he thinking when he played b5 move? How could he miss bishop e6? Moreover, these are heavily analyzed theoretical lines and I doubt that Shirov didn't know about this. All in all, he was so upset after Queen G6 landed that, yeah, you can see now his reaction on your screen. This photo is uh, brought to us by Chess Base India. A nice photo. Okay, King F8 is uh, Shirov's answer, the only move. And there goes H4. Once I finish the game, we'll turn on Stockfish and we will see how accurate is Black's defense. We will see why not, for example, Rook H4. Uh, but meanwhile, Black is bringing his knight to c4 square, bishop c1. Of course, at the moment, White is not interested in trading off the pieces. And White is keeping this bishop alive. Later, we will see, you will see how important is having that bishop. Uh, meanwhile, the pawn on e6 also drops, and after queen f7, Terzakian accepted the, ex the offer of exchange of queens, and so we have three minor p uh, three pawns, sorry, against a knight, right? Uh, three pawns against a knight, tx, tx, g4, rook a g8, f4, and now how is black going to stop these three passed pawns? Rook h8, rook h8, f5, rook g8, f6, bishop d8. So far so good, but bishop d8 is a serious mistake. We will come back to this once we finish the game. g5 by Tersakian, and now there is no way to stop this avalanche. Shirov is putting pressure on d4 in order not to allow white to free his rook, but after b3, uh, knight a5, yeah, Tersakian in here found a brilliant continuation and I'm sure he saw all this long ago and there lands e6 move. Let's see how is Tersakian realizing the advantage. With Angie's precision, you know, with Angie's precision. Rook a7, check king g6, f7, rook c8 and now white has to be careful. If you hurry with rook e8, then black has rook c1 move, and then king takes f7. And in this case, realizing the advantage is going to be extremely difficult. Probably black can even survive. That's why Tersakian just made bishop f4, and now there is no way to stop rook e8 and... Or f8 queen if you move away your rook from the 8th rank, and enough is enough, Shirov resigned. Now my stockfish is on and so we see that uh, b5 is the top move, but a6 is also decent, why not both are top moves. a6 by Shirov, e4 and b5. And so yes, we see that bishop e6 is the top line, takes 
e5. King f7, knight d5, these are the moves. Takes, takes, and the pawn on g6 drops. Yes, he takes d5 is a decent move. King f8, h4. And now, what if, for example, rook takes h4? Is it good? Then g3. And black is in trouble, guys. g3 is really very strong. That's why we have knight b6 and king b1. On c1, white king was exposed to some checks. Knight c4, bishop c1. Look how accurate Terzakian is. The pawn on e6 drops, queen f7. And Terzakian also goes for an exchange on f7. Queen g4 is an alternative, but he makes another top move, h5. h5 is another top move, g6. Check. Um, let's note that so far Shiro is also playing accurately. Then we have rook a g8, another top engine move. f4 by Terzakian. King f7. So far Shiro is defending well, takes, takes, f5. White has a slight edge, but from black side a precision is required. And this is the critical moment where Shirov made a terrible mistake. He played bishop d8, which is losing. The move is rook g4. I'm sure he saw rook g4, but why he didn't choose? Maybe he thought that he can't hold this position. Check, king d8, rook c1. Maybe he thought that being down a pawn in this position is losing. Yeah, but definitely this is a better line than bishop d8. And this is just losing g5, bishop b6, b3. And now take a look how passive this knight is. e6 check. Rook e1 and e6 are both top moves. There is a slight margin between these moves. Yeah, both are almost equally good. e6 check by Terzai can check, king f7, rook e7 check, king g6, f7, rook c8, and uh, bishop f4, black resigned. Good game, good game by Terzai can, and these are the final standings after round 7. In the end, a chess problem for you, the task is to mate in 2. We'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.